Our current destroy method does nothing much. It just removes the ball from the game. So down here, we have ball.remove from parent and nothing else. But I made it a method for a reason. And that's why we can add some special effects code now in one place. So however a ball gets destroyed, the same special effects are used. Perhaps unsurprisingly, it's remarkably easy to create special effects with SpriteKit. In fact, it has a built-in particle editor to help you create special effects like fire, snow, rain, and smoke almost entirely through a graphical editor. I already created an example particle effect for you. We dragged it in earlier into assets.exe assets from the GitHub code for this project. Uh, but this thing's actually not an asset. It can't go to the asset catalog. You want to remove it from there, select it and delete it. And instead, back in your finder window, you want to drag this one file Fire particles or SKS uh, into the project directly, not into not into here, into the project directly like that. So it's loose inside the project rather than inside the asset catalog. And now we can go ahead and use it. So back in gamescene.swift in destroy, I'm going to try and load that by saying if let fire particles equals a new class type SK emitter node, doing particle effects. This has a file named initializer. I'll use fire particles. Then fire particles dot position is equal to ball dot position. And add that to our scene fire particles. So if we can find the, that particle file, make an emitter node out of it for doing particle effects, place it wherever the ball was, and add it to the game scene. That all happens before we call remove from parent. So we still have the ball position set. Now this SK emitter node class here, this is new and powerful. And it's designed to create high performance particle effects in sprite kit games. And all you need to do is provide it the file name of the particles you designed, and it'll do the rest. Once we have an emitter node to work with, we place it and add it to the scene. And if we run the app now, we should see the balls explode in like a fireball when they touch any slot. Let's find out. I'll drop a ball here, bounce, bounce, boom, fire down here, fantastic. Like that, fantastic. So given our little code we've actually written, and that looks remarkably good. Beautiful. But the real fun is yet to come. Because of the code for this project's now all done, you get to play with the particle editor. So I'm gonna go ahead and look inside fire particles or SKS, and you'll see that appear here as a preview, how it should look. There's actually a whole inspector for that over here, where you can modify all the values for the particles here. So it shows a preview live how the particle will look. On the right, you can see all the inspectors showing you all the options you can go ahead and change. So I suggest you go ahead and noodle around, see what interests you. You'll see things like the texture, this is spark.ping, you can have, say, stars or any of those types of pet texture in there as much as you want to. We have birth rate, how fast to make new particles. We have particles maximum, how many to create before it's finished emitting. So you can see you have like a puff of fire, then it stops. You can have, you know, two million to make fire for a very long time. We have lifetime here, how long it should live for. That's a starting value. And the range is a variation on start. This means make every particle last exactly two and a half seconds. If this was two and a half and the range was 0.5, it would allow half second of variance in the life span of the particles. You'll see a range of X and Y 44. That means at its position, make particles 44 points around that. Like because our ball is 44 points in total, that means it'll make particles all around the ball rather than one particular dot. Uh, we have angle. Uh, which direction to fire particles in, plus a range that gives a little cone to fire them in. We have uh, speed, start, how fast they make them move, plus a range again, the variation on that thing. We have acceleration, whether to get faster or slower. This lets you do things like gravity to pull them down over time. We have alpha start, uh, how transparent they should be when they're first created, plus a range, so some variation between particles. And a speed, in this case, it's minus 0.45, which means make them fade out over time. We have scale, start, speed, and range. So how big to make them when they start, uh, how much variation to provide inside these things is range, and make them small over time, 0.5, so they, they fade away into little dots by the end of it. 
Rotation zero, don't make, make them spin around, keep them straight as they are. And a color blend factor, how much to color each particle, uh, how much to vary it, and how much to make it change over time. So go ahead and edit your particles, and when you're finished, save, try it out again, press Command R, and see what you think. It's worth adding, you can create particles from one of Xcode's built-in particle templates. If you go to the File menu and choose a New File, or press Command N, you can then look for Particle in here to see Sprite Kit Particle File. And then you'll see a template. There's Fire, Fireflies, Rain, Smoke, Snow, Smart, and more. All different styles to work with out of the box.